Hi, welcome to the Divorce Connection Network. I'm Tammy Saltzman and I'm here with Dr. Barbara Winters. We are so pleased to have her. She is a psychologist, a sexologist, and a relationship expert. She has been working in Boca Raton with couples for over 25 years. Barbara, welcome. Hi, thanks Tammy. So glad to have you here. Thanks for having me. So today we're here to talk about what to do if you are having problems in your bedroom. Relationships, I have found there are three reasons why people look to get divorced. It's either sex, money, or in-laws. Those are the three main reasons. And so today we have a relationship expert, someone who's going to tell us three tips couples who are having issues should know about. Barbara? Well, couples have a lot of problems in the bedroom, and they have a lot of problems for various reasons, whether one wants to do it too much or a different way, or they simply just don't want to connect. So couples who come into therapy, there's a lot of things that can help them, but basically the first thing they need to think about sexually is to create that space. In order to create a space for sex, it's like the perfect storm. You have to have many variables that sort of work together. It's not just a matter of getting together. You have to have physical, workings, you have to have physiological workings, you have to have your own self being able to connect with yourself and your erotic self, and then you have to look at yourself in the context of the relationship. So there's multiple variables that create all kinds of problems. So I tell them that it doesn't come easy after the 18 months or the 24 months of the honeymoon. They have to really make an effort to create that space, whatever that takes. Okay, that's great. So what would, if a couple wants to create that space, what would you recommend they start by doing? Well, I usually tell them that they need to stay connected. By the time people get to me, there's been a big disconnect. And there's been a big disconnect because they either um, have some unresolved issues with their partners, um, with themselves, they're not connected to themselves. They need to stay, stay connected in some way, shape, or form, whether it be through communication, through creating projects or growth experiences within the couple, um, or to find out you know, where the attachment injuries have happened, which a lot of couples do have. So I tell them that they have to figure out a way to stay connected. When people come in, for example, and they've been sleeping in separate bedrooms, that's not a good sign because that's an even bigger sign of a disconnect. I find in my practice a lot of times, you know, someone will come in and they'll say, we haven't slept in the same bedroom in seven years. Right. And they've become more like roommates right. than husband and wife. Right. And, you know, inevitably one is going to stray perhaps right. because they're not getting their needs met. Right. They're not getting their needs met or they have some issues where they can't get their needs met. There's a variety of reasons that couples, but, you know, I tell couples, obviously, if you're, you're working with divorce, by the time people get to see you, they're in a pretty bad state. I mean, many couples don't come into therapy until they're at a place where they've been disconnected for years. I mean, I see couples who come in where they've been disconnected for 30 years. Why now are they coming in to save their marriage? Sometimes, you know, couples get married and things are great in the beginning right. and hot in the beginning. Right. And then something happens, uh, either... Uh, an issue between them where there's an anger that's created right. or a lack of distrust is created. Right. Um, sometimes w someone is injured and then they start taking a medication right. that may affect them. Right. I find a lot of women, when they start going through menopause, their sex right. drive changes right. and, and their husbands are bewildered of the change. Right. What can some couples do to overcome some of these issues? Well, those are different kinds of issues. I mean, mm -hmm. you mentioned a couple of physiological issues. Sometimes it's really one party going out and evaluating their own physiology. Are their hormones down? How is menopause having an effect? Um, so you have to have a physiological evaluation. It's multi-determined. Right. And so that's so they could also seek a therapist if they're having issues with their sex life, but they might right. want to also speak to their general practitioner right. to see if something they're taking may be affecting. Absolutely. I mean, when I do an assessment, I look at all the variables. You have to look at all the variables mm -hmm. um, because you don't really know what's coming in. Okay. And so if a couple is looking to work on healing, 
-hmm. Is there an exercise that you can recommend that they do? Well, I mean, one of the first things I ask them is, is to ask, I, I ask them to assess is how meaningful the relationship is to them. How much they want to really take the time to work on their relationship if it's important. For some people it's not that important. Some people don't realize how important it really is. Right. But they have to assess really how meaningful it is and they, I might ask them to, to think on their own about that question. In a marriage, how important do you think the healthy sex life is? I think it's very important. However, couples I think have to determine frequency, um, quality on their own. I don't, I don't think that there has to be a set schedule. You mentioned before things start happening, life happens. Sometimes you have children, you have full-time jobs, and the frequency of sex drops. But if a couple is happy with that, that's something that they have to decide. But at the end of the day, whatever they decide on is very important. There has to be some sort of connection. Okay, great. So um, how do couples reach you? And what kind of services would you offer couples? Like, do you have couples come in together? Do you have them come in separately? Do you do a little bit of each? How do you work okay. and how do people reach you? Well, that's a little bit of a secret. Couples find me a lot of times on the internet or through word of mouth. Um, one of the first questions that I get is, should we come in together, should we come in alone? Right. Um, obviously, if they're having a couple's issue, it's good if they come in together, but I sort of leave that up to them. It's really kind of diagnostic. Sometimes one party wants to come in first, so I'll just sort of go with that. But that's kind of a diagnostic. Right, and I guess it, that's a true sign of what might be going on mm -hmm. that needs to be discussed privately as opposed to together. Right. But I would imagine that eventually whatever is being discussed would have to be openly discussed in order for the couple to get through the sexual barrier. Would that be correct? I would say absolutely. But if one party wants to come in alone, maybe they don't feel safe enough to talk about that. So I kind of leave it up to them. If a party is not feeling sexually fulfilled and they don't feel comfortable communicating, would you recommend that they perhaps write down how they feel and communicate like in another way? Well, sure. Sometimes we do that. Um, I try to help couples create the space to talk about it in my office and to make that sort of safe. And that works a lot of the time. There have been times when somebody feels better with the written language. They can do that. Whatever works. Right. So. It, perhaps writing a heart-to-heart -heart letter to your spouse mm -hmm. uh, talking about issues, fears, fantasies, that is all re really healthy and you would totally recommend that Absolutely. as like a self-help thing. Right. There are couples where one party is really um, yearning after there's been a sexless marriage and the other party has no idea and if they don't feel safe enough to talk about something like that they can do what you said and sometimes just kind of getting it out on paper is a good first step. Any any hint that you know you can give to a couple who may have strayed outside their marriage in a way to forgive and forget? Is there one quick tip you can Okay, well now you're opening up a whole can of worms I on know. infidelity. But the quick tip that I will say, and I can give you a quick tip, is that you know historically infidelity was looked at as bad, and it's still a big trust violation and an injury, but I look at it as an opportunity to take a look at the relationship and to get it to another level. Great, so in Dr. Winter's opinion, it's all about renewal and learning and growing and not make wrong and doom and gloom. So that gives a lot of couples hope that there could be a rainbow at the end of the storm. And I really like that perspective. And I'm glad I asked you that question. Good. That was a good question. Thank you so much for joining us today. I Thanks really appreciate me. you coming down. Thank you. Thank you.